G'day and welcome back to another episode of Ask Ben. Uh, thanks so much for all the positive comments and feedback and the thumbs up. Uh, I encourage you, if you do like the videos, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, which is somewhere up there. Can't remember which side it's on. In fact, I think it's over here. Uh, hit the subscribe button and uh, you won't miss a thing. Uh, this week on Ask Ben, I'm going to answer two questions. Uh, one of them about tripods and one's about destinations in Tasmania. So I'm going to start off with uh, Catherine Williams' question. Catherine says, can you name a good brand of tripod that you would recommend, please? I would love to know uh, that it has a lever on it and can leave the foot on the camera at any time. Thanks, Ben. Um, yeah, I can certainly name a few different brands. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of different brands of tripod out there. And uh, the tripod that I use, if you go to my website and look at the review section, you'll see that I use the Really Right Stuff TVC33. Uh, now, that tripod, just for the legs alone, is about $1,000. You'll need another you know, three to $500 to put a head on it if you use a Really Right Stuff head as well. But I've got to say, the Really Right Stuff uh, tripod is probably one of the best tripods on the market. It's well manufactured, and I absolutely love it. And, uh, and I've been sort of uh, known for that. I've, I've said it several times. Uh, so if you're, gonna, if you're buying a tripod for the long haul, uh, I would say spend a bit of money on it. I see people spending you know, thousands of dollars. I mean, you look at this lens here, for example. Now uh, this 70 to 200 VR2, it's a $2,500 lens. And people would buy this lens because they want sharp photos. And then they would go and they'd use a cheap tripod that's gonna vibrate and not give them the sharp images, which to me just seems really, really stupid. So if you're gonna spend a heap of money on your camera and on your lenses, invest in a great tripod. Now I'm not saying go and buy really right stuff. You don't need to spend $1,500 on your tripod and head. There are other alternatives. Uh, one of the uh, most recent tripods that I bought for traveling, uh, which I thought was really good, is the uh, is a, um, um, a Benro, they call it a travel flat. I'm not sure of the model number, but I'll do a review, review on it at some stage. But if you jump on to Google and you just type in Benro travel flat, you'll find their travel flat series. And I got a carbon fiber one, and I've got to say I was very, very impressed uh, with the quality and with the sturdiness of it. And that's what I look for in a tripod. So if you're going to go and buy a tripod, I would steer away from those that have the wind-up center column. They're the real cheap ones because it's flimsy. Um, I try and steer away from anything with the center column simply because uh, the center column is the weakest spot. So my really right stuff doesn't have a center column. My new Benro Travel Flat one does not have a center column, and that's how I like it. Um, it, not just because it's a weak point, but also I like to splay the legs right out flat and get my camera right down low to the ground sometimes. Um, so if you're looking for a good tripod, uh, there are a couple of brands that I'd look at. Of course, you've got your stables, like your, you've got uh, your Manfrotto's. Manfrotto make uh, some great uh, tripods and are gonna be a little bit more affordable, and you'll find something there. But once again, just go into the shop, have a look, take your camera with you, stick it on. Now, all of these different manufacturers you can buy plates that will stay on your camera. So you said one of the things you want is to be able to leave the, uh, the, the plate on the bottom. You put leave the foot on it, but that's what you meant. It's called a plate. And uh, all of these different manufacturers make it so you can leave the plate on the bottom of your camera, which is a very, very handy thing. So uh, good on you for deciding to go and get yourself a decent tripod. Hopefully that has helped answer that question. Um, I will stick an, a, a link, by the way, in the uh, notes below to the Really Right Stuff tripod uh, review that I've got on my website so it's easier for you to find down below. Uh, my second question is from uh, Damien Park. Now Damien asks, just wondering if you could advise where in Tasmania I should go and photograph as I will be there for five days soon. Great question Damien and, and luckily I've been to Tasmania a couple of times and uh, there's some fantastic locations and the other th good thing about Tasmania is you can actually visit a fair bit of them uh, in five days, it, you are going to be a little bit limited. It depends how much driving you want to do. And I'm not sure whether you're going to Launceston or into Hobart. Um, if, uh, you know, some of the, I'll give you some of the locations and you can sort of jump onto Google Maps and see where they are and what's going to suit you best. Um, Liffey Falls is, is, was beautiful. I went to Liffey Falls and uh, it's an easy probably 30 minute walk down to the bottom of the falls and it is a, and there's all sorts of places to stop on the way down where you can photograph you know the the currents and the the you know the just the beautiful whirlpools and things little waterfalls and cascades once you get down to the bottom it's huge the waterfalls there are huge and uh, you, you may have seen some of my photos from down there I absolutely loved it so Liffey Falls is a, is, is a nice place um, Cradle Mountain National Park which is where the famous Dove Lake and Cradle Mountain is uh, if you can get there, I suggest it. Uh, five days is actually not a long time to be in Tasmania and be able to capture everything, uh, especially if you go somewhere like there because you'll find quite often that uh, early in the mornings, the peak of the uh, Cradle Mountain is hard to see 
and you may miss the peak uh, due to the cloud, etc. But you know, I would suggest go to Cradle Mountain for a couple of days. The rainforest around there is amazing, uh, and I think you're gonna you would really enjoy it. Uh, so you go sort of to the national park in the morning, photograph over Dove Lake, same in the sunset, and then during the day, the good thing about being in that national park is there's lots of rainforest reserves around where you can go into the rainforest and grab your uh, macro lens and go and get fungi shots and a lot of macro shots. Uh, another place that I absolutely loved was uh, Mount Field National Park, which is sort of closer to Hobart on the other side of Tasmania. And Mount Field National Park, uh, in there you have uh, Russell Falls and you have Horseshoe Falls, and the same thing uh, during the day. It's rainforest, you can go crazy uh, getting, the, uh, uh, getting the, the fungi, which is really nice. And of course, you can walk right up to the top of uh, of the mountains there. It's about a two hour trek. I went up to the very top uh, trying to get the Fagus when it was in uh, in bloom, but the weather was blizzardy and it was windy and it was crazy. It's called the Tarn Shelf. Get yourself walking all the way up there and uh, it's absolutely beautiful, magnificent place. Um, and then of course, you've got the coast. There's a lot of coastline in Tasmania. And I've got to be honest, I haven't done it all, um, but I'm gonna give you a reference to a photographer that lives down there uh, that I met when I was down there. His name's Luke O'Brien, and he runs uh, his own web page, which is just Luke O'Brien Photography. Once again, I'll put a link down below, and uh, and that may give you some good ideas of where to go. And feel free to contact him as well, because uh, he runs workshops down there, and maybe you can jump into one of his workshops. So there you go. Hopefully, uh, Catherine and Damien, that's helped answer your questions. If any of you, if you have a question that you would like me to answer on the Ask Ben Show, uh, you can uh, ask me by uh, going to Twitter, uh, ask at Ask Ben, oh, sorry, at on three legs rather, hashtag Ask Ben, so at on three legs with the number three, hashtag Ask Ben, and I will do my best to answer that question for you. Of course, you can also hit me up on the Facebook page, uh, even in the YouTube comments. I don't care how you get to me, just ask me a question and I'll do my best to answer it. Uh, until, uh, until next episode, uh, happy snapping.